Good afternoon. My name is James Shanty, and today's date is March the 4th, 2015. I'm at Vance Graham Community College. I'm sitting, we're standing here in front of the basic law enforcement training class, class number 100. Today, we're going to speak with you about sudden cardiac arrest and early defibrillation. <clears throat> Just a little bit about myself. My name is James Champion. Um, I met you guys momentarily a few weeks ago. Um, just to tell you a little bit about myself, I'm also a paramedic. I'm certified in North Carolina. I've worked you know, with EMS since about 1999. I started off as a basic EMT. I started to work with the Henderson Fire Department <clears throat> where I then got my EMT intermediate and back in 2004, I got my EMT paramedic. Around that time, I also started teaching with the American Heart Association as a BLS instructor. And so, the things that I want to talk to you about today, like I said, is kind of a, a preface into what we're going to talk about next week when I come in and do the first responder class. So my introduction, I want to tell you on March 22nd of 2014, Coach Bear volunteer firefighter Donald Robson was on the scene of a working brush fire. There were multiple brush fires in Vance County that day. <coughs> um, the, they had low humidity. It was very dry. Firefighter Robson had been on numerous fires uh, before he actually got to this one. At approximately 3.45, firefighter Robson experienced sudden cardiac arrest. The following is the 911 audio clips made by Fire Marshal Paramedic Harold Henrich, who was right next to Donald Robson when he collapsed. He was being loaded into the Duke Life Flight helicopter. So what does sudden cardiac arrest have to do with me? Um, today my intention is to inform you on sudden cardiac arrest and the importance of early defibrillation. <clears throat> the reason that I do want to speak to you about sudden cardiac arrest is not, it, can't, it doesn't just happen to firefighters. It can happen to law enforcement officers also. It can happen to you during physical training, but it can also happen after you go on a foot chase and you get into a scuffle with a criminal. What is the number one overall killer of police officers and firefighters? 
Heart, heart attack, which, um, although heart attacks and sudden cardiac arrest are different, heart attacks can, or sudden cardiac arrest can occur during or after a heart attack. So that's the reason why I wanted to talk to you about it today. But what is sudden cardiac arrest? The National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute defines sudden cardiac arrest as a condition in which the heart suddenly and unexpectedly stops beating. <clears throat> if this happens, blood stops flowing to the brain and other vital organs. If it's left untreated, sudden cardiac arrest usually causes death within minutes. Um, the heart has an electrical system that controls the rate and the rhythm of the heartbeat. <clears throat> Problems with the heart's electrical system can cause irregular heartbeats called arrhythmias. <clears throat> and these arrhythmias can cause the heart to beat too slow, too fast, or irregular. And then some arrhythmias, which we'll talk about with ventricular fibrillation, cause the heart to stop pumping altogether. These arrhythmias are what causes sudden cardiac arrest. 85% of sudden cardiac arrest is caused by ventricular fibrillation. <clears throat> and the thing that we want to talk about is the longer it takes for someone to be defibrillated, the less chance they have of surviving ventricular fibrillation. This is 15 minutes of someone's heart in ventricular fibrillation shown in 15 seconds. You can see that the heart is quivering, but is it pumping? No. So basically the, the brain and the heart is not getting any blood. American Heart Association um, most people have sudden cardiac arrest and die from it often within minutes. Rapid treatment of sudden cardiac arrest with a defibrillator can be life saving. Automatic external defibrillators can be used by bystanders to save the lives of people who are having sudden cardiac arrest. <clears throat> These devices are often found in public places such as airports, golf courses, businesses, doctor's offices, casinos convention centers and schools. To treat ventricular fibrillation, sudden cardiac arrest, rescuers must be able to rapidly integrate CPR with the use of an AED. Um, to give this victim the best chance of surviving, you must start CPR, notify EMS as soon as possible, and initiate an automatic external defibrillator. So what is defibrillation? The American Heart Association defines defibrillation as a process in which an electronic device gives an electric shock to the heart. This helps reestablish normal contraction rhythms and having <coughs> to a heart having dangerous arrhythmias or that's in cardiac arrest. A victim's chance of survival decreases by 7 to 10 percent for every minute that passes without defibrillation. An automatic external defibrillator, also known as an AED, is a portable device that checks the heart rhythm and it can send an electric shock to the heart to try to restore a normal rhythm. So how do we use an automatic external defibrillator? There's five common steps to using an AED. Step one is going to be to turn it on. Step two is place the pads on the patient's bare chest. Step three, you allow the defibrillator to analyze the heart rhythm. If the AED picks up a shock with rhythm, it will tell you that a shock with rhythm has been found, and then it will tell you to clear the patient and shock. So we'll show you the ease of using a defibrillator at this time. Step number one says to do what? Turn it on. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. So it tells you to apply pads to patient's flashing bare pads chest. Connector next to flashing light. You take the pads out. Apply pads. It shows you exactly where to place the pads on the patient. So you remove the pads. You place it exactly as shown on the diagram on the pads. 
<clears throat> the defibrillator's next step says to plug it in next to the flashing yellow light. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. So at this stage, the defibrillator is analyzing the heart rhythm. Shock advised. All right. Charging. So shock has Take been advised. Fear of patient. All right, before I shock, what shot must now. I do? Press the clear, clear, now. clear. Shock delivered. And then I press the shock button. Those are the five common steps of using a defibrillator. <clears throat> So, in conclusion, today I provided you with information on sudden cardiac arrest. I also talked to you about early defibrillation and what an automated external defibrillator is. <clears throat> we also saw a demonstration on the use of an automated external defibrillator. So I hope that the information that I've given you today will help you recognize a victim in sudden cardiac arrest <clears throat> as soon as it happens. And you will also see the urgency to get an automated external defibrillator on scene to apply early defibrillation. Thank you.